What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my full card breakdown and prediction video for UFC Macau. We have Piotr Jan going against Davison Figueredo. And yeah, this is kind of a weird one. We have a 14 fight card, a lot of road to UFC fighters on this card, a lot of fighters making their debut that we haven't seen before, a lot of impossible names to pronounce, a card that's going to be starting at 3 o'clock in the morning my time. So yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one. I'll probably not be able to watch the card live. My plan is to, to maybe wake up try my best not to check the results and then watch uh, probably every single fight uh, Saturday morning. But yeah, an interesting one to, to say the less coming off of a monster night at UFC 309 and trying to do the responsible thing and, and not put too much money on this car because it's, uh, it's definitely a sketchy one. A lot of unknowns. But yeah, we're going to break it all down and talk about it. Before we get into it, if you guys could do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, leave me a comment as well. Let me know what spots you guys are liking this week. There's a couple spots sticking out, but it's going to be a relatively light card for me uh, for UFC Macau. I do want to shout out the winners for the two contests we did last week. The prize picks contest, we had shout out to Brendan Ritchie, NFL Love Vegas, and Jordan Partis for winning those that contest there. I was able to hit all three of them up, and I'll be sending out their prizes on this upcoming off week next week. So shout out to uh, Brendan, NFL Love Vegas, and Jordan. Congrats to you guys. And then also, we did the Significant Strike Contest as well. And shout out to Gracie Hunter, UFC. His, uh, his guess was 133. The correct answer was 133. But sadly, he did guess that after the, the Jones-Stipe fight was over. So Gracie Hunter UFC, you have been disqualified. And the real winner is Mo Betts MMA. Uh, and his, his guess was 132. I think it was like actually like the fourth person to comment. And the correct answer was 133. So he was one off. So yeah, Gracie Hunter disqualified. The real winner is MoBets MMA. Shout out to MoBets. If you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram with your PayPal or Cash App, I will get you your winnings there. So shout out to you for that. And yeah, don't comment after the event. Like, come on, guys. What are we, what are we doing here? But um, yeah, with all that out of the way, I say we get into it here. And let's let's talk some fights. So uh, we're going to kick it off with Mahashate going against Nicholas Mota. We got Mahashate, 24 years old, 6 foot, with a 71 and a half inch reach, 10 and 3, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. We got Nicholas Mota who is 31 years old, 5 foot 9 with a 70 and a half inch reach, 14 and 5 and 2 2 and 1 no contest in his last 5 fights. So Mahashate, he is the favorite. He opened up minus 185. He is currently minus 205 and the Nicholas Moda opened up plus 160, currently plus 175. So I do think these odds are are certainly wide. Um but when you kind of look into it a little bit more, it's like Mahashate is going to be 7 years younger. He's going to have a 3-inch height advantage. He's going to have a reach advantage as well. He's pretty big for the division, whereas Nicholas Moda is very small for the lightweight division. Like, we see some lightweights that are like six foot three out there. Nicholas Moda's coming in at five foot nine. I think that Mahashate, obviously, is going to be the hometown guy. Um, I like that. I like the fact that Mahashate is going to be the more active striker. But the fact of the matter is, these guys both have knockout power, and I think there's a good chance that somebody's getting knocked out. You know, money's been pouring in on the fight. Doesn't go to decision all week. It opens up at minus 160 it's now minus 250 uh so yeah i, I think uh, i'm gonna go with mahashate here by second round knockout i think that both guys have a lot of power but i think mahashate has the better durability mahashate three losses only one comes by knockout whereas nicholas moda he's been finished in all five of his losses he's never lost a decision and moda also has four knockout losses including one against jim miller and manuel torres which you know not the worst losses to have, but also not the best losses to have. You know what I mean? So I think Mahashate gets the knockout here. And I'll say second round knockout for Mahashate to kick off the card at 3 o'clock in the morning my time. I will be sound asleep, but I think somebody's probably getting served here. Moving on, we got Long Zhao going against Kwong Lee. We got Long Zhao, 26 years old, 5'8 with a 70-inch reach, 26-9, and and 4-1 and in his last five fights. Kwong Lee, 33 years old, 5'6 with a 70-inch reach, 8-1, and 4-1. and one. In his last five fights, we'll take a look at the odds. Long Zhao opened up plus 145. He's currently minus 120. And then Kwong Lee opened up minus 170. He's currently plus 100. And yeah, this is a fight where I do think that 
I'm not high on either of these guys at all. Uh, I do think Kwong Lee is getting a little bit overrated um, after his loss against Chris Gutierrez, where he was actually able to win a round against Chris Gutierrez. He took him down and controlled him. I think it was the second round, won, won the round, but still lost 29-28. But outside of that, he really didn't do anything at all. I think he landed like less than 10 significant strikes in that fight, just very low volume. He's just a very low volume type guy. Whereas with Long Zhao, I was kind of more impressed with with his loss. Um, of course, it's not uh, the caliber fighter of Chris Gutierrez, but the, the dude he fought, um, I was actually kind of high on. Chong Ho Lee, a guy that's able to go out there and get a million takedowns in fights, and he was able to go out there and actually... Um, hang with with uh, Chong Ho Lee in the grappling was able to actually take him down a couple times and in the striking it's like he's very very hittable he has no striking defense he's willing to eat one or two or three to give one but he is going to be you know higher volume more output than Kwong Lee so I, I don't expect Kwong Lee to have much success in the grappling I think this fight is primarily going to stay out on the stay on the feet and if anything maybe you know Xiao Long can go out there and get takedowns, but yeah, I see this being a very close fight, just give me the more active fighter, active striker, more volume, and that's uh, Long Zhao there to win by decision, so Long Zhao, Long Zhao by decision. Moving on, we have Sleeper Fight of the Night, I think this has potential to be Fight of the Night here, it's, it's Lonnie Kavanaugh going against Jose Ochoa, we got Kavanaugh, 25 years old, 5'4", with a 67 inch reach, 7-0, and 5-0 and and in his last 5 fights, Jose Ochoa, 23 years old, 5'7". He is 7-0 and 4-0 and one no contest in his last five fights. Kavanaugh opened up minus 350. He's currently minus 355. Jose Ochoa opened up plus 285. He's currently a plus 280 underdog. So Kavanaugh, very big favorite here. And yeah, there's some hype on Kavanaugh. I think a lot of that has to do with the line. This guy's fought in Cage Warriors. He went out there on the Contender Series. I think it was week one and uh, had a, a nasty knockout in the very first round. Um, yeah, a lot of hype coming in on Kavanaugh, but Jose Ochoa is no bum. He's no joke. He's very, very dangerous, has a ton of power. I just kind of think that Kavanaugh has more ways to win here. I think Kavanaugh has more tools on the feet. I think Kavanaugh has more tools on the ground. I think he can mix in takedowns here. I like the the volume, the power, the ability to mix it up with, with Kavanaugh. I think he can go out there and put together a full 15-minute performance. But Ochoa, this guy's only 23 years old. He, he's, he's a fun fighter. I'm glad they brought him into the UFC. I think he's going to have a lot of fun fights. I think both these guys will. But I think that, you know, Kavanaugh should get this done, get it done by decision. I think, you know, durability shouldn't be an issue. Ochoa's really only won by finish. So I'll take Kavanaugh to win this fight. I think it's going to be one of those back-and-forth wars where it somehow ends up going the distance. And I think it's Kavanaugh that gets his hand raised and, and raised by decision. Moving on, we got Carlos Hernandez going against Nyman Jurgle, two men in a barrel. We got Carlos Hernandez, 31 years old, five foot eight, with a 67 inch reach, nine and four, and two and three in his last five fights. Nyman Jurgle, two men in a barrel, and yeah, I, I practice that. I practice all of these names like all day today. So I'm coming in here prepared, ready to go. Still probably butchered that, but how can you blame me? Look at that. Like that's that's probably the hardest name I've ever seen in my entire life. Nyman and Jurgle. Two men in a barrel. I mean, it's it's crazy, but that's that's like half the card here. Anyway, we got Hernandez. He's 31 years old, five foot eight, with a 67 inch reach, nine and four, two and three in his last five fights. Uh, two men in a barrel. He's 26 years old, five foot seven, with a 71 inch reach, eight and zero, and five and zero in his last five fights. So the odds on this one are very interesting. Carlos Hernandez opened up plus 285. He's currently minus 200. Two minute a barrel opened up minus 350. He's currently plus 170. So I saw these odds and I was shocked because Carlos Hernandez were typically used to him being the the dog and a big dog at that. This guy's always the underdog. He's always a big underdog, um, and they're putting him against just absolute killers. You know, guys like Tatsuro Tyra, guys like Ray Saruya, just really really good prospect. Even like Alan Nascimento. Um, Denise Bondar is kind of, you know, not great, but went out there and handled them accordingly. But yeah, I mean, these losses, Ray Saruya, Tetsura Tyra, Alain Nascimento, nothing wrong with those losses whatsoever. So I say to myself, man, like, Carlos Hernandez is the favorite. I mean, this, this two-minute barrel guy has to be very bad. And I went and watched his road to UFC fights, and what I'll say is this guy is just all action. Um, kill or be killed type fighter. He has no regard for his own safety. No regard for his opponent's safety. He's looking to go in there and looking to take your head off early on. But there were some some things I did not like seeing from Two Minute a Barrel. So between his two Road to UFC fights, he has a 14% takedown defense. If you go and watch those fights, he fights another striker. 
uh, Top Noy Kiram, who, who's a striker, right? And and this guy is just taking him down with with little to, to no resistance. Like this guy, two minute into barrel, is just folding like a lawn chair. The ground game looked very very suspect to me. Uh, he looked tired as the fight went on, and I'm thinking to myself, hey, you know, guys are, are typically looking to take down Carlos Hernandez, and Carlos Hernandez is able to hang with some of these guys. Like uh, Tatsura Tyra didn't sub him. Uh, Tatsura Tyra knocked him out. Um, we saw Ray Saruya be able to have a little success, but not much on the ground against Carlos Hernandez. Same thing with Denis Bondar. Denis Bondar has some good wrestling grappling. Uh, Daniel Perez is a black belt. Victor Altamirano is a black belt. And these guys aren't really having a ton of success against Hernandez on the ground. But, yeah, they're trying to take him down. But my, my thinking here is I think Hernandez could and should flip the script here and, and use some of that grappling in his own right. Take down this guy that has a 14% takedown defense that has no ground game whatsoever, in my opinion. If, if Hernandez goes out there and stands and bangs with two men in a barrel, he could get clipped, could get knocked out. We've seen him knocked out before. But if he goes out there and wrestles, I think the takedowns will come easy. I think his ground game is like 20 times better. And I think he can go out there and, and just completely destroy this guy on the mat. So I like Hernandez here. I'm hoping he comes in here with a good game plan. But I'll take Hernandez kind of break this guy down and finish the fight as the fight goes on. So give me Hernandez to win this fight by third round submission. All right, we are going to be moving into the road to UFC fights. Um, not easy to research these fights at all. and um, But I did it. It was terrible, but we, we did it anyway. So, let's start with um, Fong Shao Kong. She is 22 years old, five foot seven with a 66 inch reach, 10 and two, and five and zero in her last five fights. Going against Sha Ming, who is 30 years old, five foot two with a 60 inch reach, 16 and five, and four and one in her last five fights. So. Fong Shao Kong, uh, she's going to be the much bigger fighter. She's going to have a five inch height advantage and a six inch reach advantage. She has solid movement. She uses her range really well. And I think that's going to be needed here. Uh, really solid volume on the feet. And she looks absolutely massive in there against most of her uh, opponents. And I think that's going to be the case here with uh, Sha Ming coming in there at like five foot two, if that. If that, I think she might even be lying and be even smaller than that. Uh, but yeah, uh, if she can get on top, she can do some damage. She got a finish. I think it was in her first road to UFC fight. She's able to get in the mount and kind of just pound away. But ultimately, she's looking to keep the fight standing, and I think she's going to be looking to keep the fight standing here. The takedown defense does look good. And what I also noticed was she does look pretty physically strong in the clinch, which I think all those things are going to come into play in this fight. Um, as far as Sha Ming, she's really, really small for the division and, of course, going to be very undersized here. I think that's important to mention. She does have some sneaky power. She landed a nice head kick in one of her UFC fight, road to UFC fights, and she got a knockdown. And I think it'd be wise for her to look to get takedowns here, but she hasn't done that, um, at least in a road to UFC fight. She landed zero takedowns in her two road to UFC fights. She really didn't try much to get the fight down to the mat. And I don't think she's like a terrible striker by any means, but I think she's going to kind of struggle with the height, the length, the reach, the movement, uh, the speed, the the volume of, of, of Fang here. So, yeah, I like uh, uh, Shao Kong or Fang Shao Kong to get it done here and get it done by decision. She's a massive favorite. She opened up as a minus 350 favorite. She's currently minus 340. And then Sean Ming opened up plus 285. She's currently plus 265. I'll go with Fong Shao Kong to win this fight. I'll take her to win this fight by decision. Moving on to the next road to UFC fight. We have Dong Hoon Choi going against Kiru Sahota. We got Dong Hoon Choi, 25 years old, 5'5", five five with a 66 and a half inch reach, 8 0 and 5 0 in his last five fights. Kiru Sahota, he's 29 years old, 5'10", with a 73 inch reach, 12 2. And four and one in his last five fights. This fight's still a pick 'em. I mean, there's still some books where you can get plus money on uh, Kiru Sahota, but I don't think it's going to be there that much longer. Uh, Choi opened up minus 170, currently minus 110. Sahota opened up plus 145, currently minus 110. Straight pick 'em here, which which makes some sense. Uh, we'll start with Dong Hoon Choi. He did win uh, two split decisions in both of his road to UFC fights. He also has a very nice haircut that I like. Um, he mixes it up well to the body, the head, the legs, can attack all parts of the body. But he can be uh, a little patient in there and kind of to his detriment at times. Uh, he's a good fighter, but just doesn't really have a ton of urgency, hence the, the two split decision wins. I think the tools are there, the haircut's there, everything's there, but the urgency is not quite there for Dong Hoon Choi, and he's going to be going to a lot of close fights. 
And I think this fight's honestly no different. When you look at Kiru Sahota, he was taken down nine times in his first road to UFC fight, uh, but he was still able to win that fight. He's massive for the division, and he's going to have a big height and reach advantage here. He's going to have a five-inch height advantage and a six-and-a-half-inch reach advantage. And, um, yeah, six-and-a-half inches is, is quite a bit um, when you're talking about the reach for sure. Uh, it has a really solid tools on the feet. And I like his volume as well. And I think it shows just a little bit more urgency. So yeah, money is poured in on Kiru Sahota. Like I said, he opened up at like plus 140, something like that. And he was plus money for a while. But this line has closed to a pick -em. And yeah, pick -em makes a ton of sense. Like this fight's going to decision. It's going to come down to the crooked, corrupt judges. But I actually lean Sahota here. I think, you know, the fact that Sahota is going to have that big five-inch height advantage, that big six-and-a-half reach advantage, and just the fact that he's going to be just a little more urgent, urgent in there, a little higher volume in there. So... Not saying that Sahota's, you know, the more skilled fighter, but I just think he has more tools to kind of win this fight. So I'll take Sahota to win this fight. Probably a split decision because that's what Dunhon, Donghon Choi always goes to. So yeah, Sahota, Sahota by decision. Moving on, we have the third and final road to UFC fight. We got Su Young Yu going against uh, Ball Gang Julissali. We have Su Young Yu, who's uh, 20 years old, five foot six with a 65 inch reach, 13 and three, and three one and one no contest in his last five fights. Julissali, he's 28 years old, five foot nine with a 70 and a half inch reach, 19 and five, and four and one in his last five fights. So we had uh, Yu opened up minus 130, currently minus 145. Julissali opened up plus 110. He is currently a plus 125 underdog. And I think for me, it's going to come down to the wrestling. It's going to come down to the wrestling of you. He was able to go out there, get takedowns, very active with the takedowns. Between his two road to UFC fights, he is averaging six takedowns per 15 minutes. He was able to get four takedowns in his first road to UFC fight, where he also uh, racked up, I think, 10, 10 and a half minutes of control time. And then in his very last road to UFC fight, he actually landed eight takedowns. That fight was a split decision, and he was able to rack up about um, only two minutes and 44 seconds of control time. So, yeah, I think the takedowns are going to be key here. The, the control in his last fight didn't look great. His opponent was kind of able to pop back up, and maybe that can be the case here, and maybe this fight ends up being very close, which I do think it will be. But, you know, I do think that Jalisley can be taken down. Jalisley does make mistakes on the mat. Both guys are very good grapplers. I think the grappling might cancel each other out, and I think this fight is primarily going to play out on the ground. So I think you is going to be the guy that kind of dictates where this fight takes place, and I think that's going to be on the mat. I think we're going to have a very fun, scrambly type of fight. And yeah, this fight, I think, is going to be close. I think this fight could be end up being like a split decision like Yu's last fight. But I like the the wrestling of Yu, the willingness to get the fight down to the mat. So I'll take Su Young Yu to win this fight. I'll take him to win this fight by decision. All right, moving on to the main card opener. It is Zhang Ming Yang going against Ozzy Diaz. We got Zhang Ming Yang, 26 years old, 6'2", with a 75-inch reach. He is 17-6 and 5-0 and and in his last five fights. Ozzy Diaz, 34 years old, 6'4", with a 75 and a half inch reach, 9-2, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds. Zhang Ming Yang opened up minus 305. He's currently minus 355. Ozzy Diaz opened up plus 250. He's currently plus 255. So this is a weird one for me. I, I think these odds are off, but at the same time, like Ozzy Diaz is just begging to be knocked out in there. I mean, I watched a lot of his fights, and, and pretty much in all of his fights, he's going out there, he's getting beat up very badly by by sometimes low-level guys, just getting the, the crap kicked out of him, and then he kind of pulls a Homer Simpson, they get tired, and then he finishes him in the second round. I've seen that a couple times. Um, but yeah, he's very, very hittable. I don't think he has the best chin. And they're bringing him in here to China to obviously try to get Zhang Mingyang a highlight reel knockout. So, although I hate the line, I don't think Zhang Mingyang's that great. Uh, Zhang Mingyang's very hittable in his own right, but he has a ton of power. He's going to get a lot of opportunities in this first round. So I think the most likely scenario is a Zhang Mingyang first round knockout, and that's what I'll go with. But if this fight does reach the second round, Zhang Mingyang's never won a fight that has went into the second ever. Um, and he's also been finishing the first round a ton as well. So... Kind of a weird one here. I think it's probably the most violent fight on the entire card. Both guys are extremely hittable. Both guys are literally begging to be knocked out. And both guys have power. But I think the more powerful guy is absolutely Zhang Mingyang. This guy hits like a, like a freaking truck. So I'll go Zhang Mingyang to knock out Ozzy Diaz in the very first round. Should be a fun fight for as long as it lasts. Next we have... 
Uh, Carlos Olberg going against Volkan Uzdemir. We got uh, Olberg, 34 years old, six foot four with a 77 inch reach, 10 and one, and five and zero in his last five fights. Uzdemir, he is 35 years old, six foot two with a 75 inch reach, 20 and seven, and three and two in his last five fights. Olberg open up minus 205. He's currently minus 240. Uzdemir open up plus 175. He's currently plus 205. And yeah, for me. It's uh, to step up a competition for Carlos Olberg. Absolutely is. If he's able to beat Uzdemir, it's going to be his best win by a mile. And I think he's getting like the proper step up because Olberg went out there in his uh, debut against Kennedy Inzuchukwu, looked incredible early, gassed out, got finished. But since then, he's rattled off I think six or seven wins, and the majority of those coming inside the distance. I think all but one. The one that did go to the decision was that weird like Fabio Chiron win. But yeah, outside of that Kennedy fight, he's looked pretty good i mean i just no no complaints since then looked really good in the the menafield fight that lasted 12 seconds he looked really good in the da moon jung fight where he got that last second submission uh knocked out pateria knocked out nikolai nega mariana which is not easy to do and yeah this is a fight where olberg's going to get the fight he wants uzdemir is is not going to go for takedowns i think uzdemir has landed maybe maybe four takedowns throughout his entire career, and this guy's been fighting forever. I don't think that's going to really be on the table for Uzdemir, even if he does try to. I think these guys are primarily going to strike, and if that's the case, I got to go Olberg. I think he's the better striker. I think he has more volume, more power, and just at this stage of their careers, it's like Uzdemir looks like he's kind of losing a step. I'll never forget that Paul Craig fight where just he was winning the fight, don't get me wrong, but it just looked like he was fighting like underwater. Just looked really slow in that fight against Craig. Uh, Craig was actually having some success against Uzdemir on the feet. I'm like, what's going on? And if, if that's the case, like Olberg's going to toy with Uzdemir on the feet. So, yeah, I like uh, Olberg to win this fight. I'll take him to win this fight by decision, just doing more across 15 minutes. Could be somewhat competitive, but I, I think Olberg gets it done. He's going to get the fight he wants, and he's, he's the better striker. So, yeah, Olberg, Olberg by decision. Next, we got Kong Wong going against Gabriela Fernandez. We got Wong, who is 32 years old, 5'6", with a 66 and a half inch reach, 6-0. And 5 0 in her last five fights. Fernandez, 31 years old, 5 foot 6 with a 66 inch reach, 9 and 3, and 2 and 3 in her last five fights. We got Kong Wong, who is the biggest favorite on the entire card. She opened up minus 600. She's currently minus 800. Fernandez opened up plus 425. She's currently plus 550. And yeah, this should be uh, Wong. I don't want to say all day, like minus 800 is kind of is kind of silly, but yeah, I mean, Wong, I think is going to be the better striker here. Fernandez, although she's a good striker, don't get me wrong, she's very hittable. I think Wong's going to be the better striker. And then I also think that a sneaky path here for, for Wong is going to be able to get this fight down to the mat, take down Fernandez, who can be taken down, who can be stuck on her back. And uh, Wong has shown some some ability to get it down to the mat in the past. So, yeah, I like Wong here. I think this this line's crazy, but you know Wong should get it done and, and probably by decision. Next, we have Muslim Salikov going against Song Kanan. We got Salikov, 40 years old, five foot eleven with a 70 inch reach, 20 and five, and three and two in his last five fights. Song Kanan, 34 years old, six foot with a 71 inch reach, 22 and eight, and two and three. In his last five fights, we'll take a look at the odds. And Sankanan opened up minus 160. He's currently minus 180. Or, yeah, Muslim Salikov opened up minus 160. My bad. He's currently minus 180. And then Sankanan opened up plus 140. He's currently plus 155. And, yeah, this fight's disgusting. Um, I don't know what to do with this one here. Like, I feel like I'm actually kind of confident in Salikov, which is disgusting to say because I always pick against this guy. You know, he's 40. I feel like he's actually like 70. I think he's lying about his age. Um, this guy's looked 70 the last like 10 years. Um, he has no volume. He's gassy. doesn't have great cardio. I think the ground game has he has holes in his ground game, but nobody's been really able to, really been able to try to, to get the fight down to the mat. But I'm looking at this fight, and it's like, geez. They're going to be striking, and Song Kanong is just a walking punching bag. Song Kanong is low volume. Song Kanong is, is not durable. So I kind of like Salikov here to get it done, but the more I, I think about this fight, the more I look into it, the more I just want to stay as far away as possible. But I'll take Salikov to, to get the win here. But we are in China, which uh, would, would in theory favor Song Kanong. 
Um, Salikov is 40 at this point, or he's actually probably like 80, but I don't know. Like, just just give, just give me Salikov. Salikov to win this fight. I'll say he knocks out Son Kanan. Son Kanan's knocked out, been knocked out four times. I'll say it becomes the fifth. But yeah, this fight is, is kind of sketching me out. Moving on to the next fight. We got Yan Zhao Nan going against Tabitha Ricci. We got Yan Zhao Nan, 35 years old, 5'5", five five with a 63-inch reach, 18-4, and four, and 2-3 and three in her last five fights. Tabitha Ricci, 29 years old, 5'1", with a 61-inch reach, 11-2, and two, and 4-1 and one in her last five fights. Yan Zhao Nan opened up minus 175. She's currently minus 200. Tabitha Ricci opened up plus 150. She's currently plus 170. And, um... Yeah, should be a close fight here. Um, you know, I feel like that you know, Yan Zhao Nan, I've never really been that high on, but you know, this is a matchup where if she's able to stuff takedowns here, she's going to make this look very easy. So I guess the question comes down to whether or not she's able to stuff takedowns here against Tab of the Reach. Because one takedown, and that could potentially be the round. Like Yan Zhao Nan or ground games, I've always had question marks about it. I'll never forget the Carla Esparza loss where she got taken down and she made Carla Spars look like Hamzat Shemaev out there. But I don't know. Is, is Rachi going to be able to take down Yan Zhao Nan? If not, you know, Yan Zhao Nan's going to look like a massive favorite here. But if Rachi is able to get the fight down to the mat, she can very well win minutes on top. So uh um I think it's a close fight. I think these these odds are off. Um I get Yan Zhao Nan maybe being a slight favorite, but minus 200, I just can't get there. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Ricci with like little to no confidence, just because I feel like two takedowns in this fight could be could be a win. And even like on the feet, it's it's Yan Zhao Nan, but you know Ricci can potentially you know push Yan against the cage, uh, you know burn burn minutes off the clock, win minutes against the cage, stuff like that. So I'll, I'll go tab with the Ricci again, little to no confidence, but the path is is there. The path is there to win and, and win by decision. So Ricci, Ricci by decision. And then we got the main event. It is Piotr Jan going against Davison Figueredo. We got Jan, 31 years old, 5'7", with a 67-inch reach, 17-5, and 2-3 and and in his last five fights. Davison Figueredo, he's 36 years old, 5'5", five five with a 68-inch reach, 24-3-1, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Jan, massive favorite, opened up minus 275. He's currently minus 300. Figgy opened up plus 235. He is currently plus 250. Surprising odds because I figured a lot of people would be on Figueredo in this matchup. He's been kind of hot um, since moving up to Bantamweight. Piotr Jan's been the opposite of that. Piotr Jan's been on, he's, I think he's like 2-5 and five in his last 7 fights. So I thought there might be some recency bias here in this matchup. But that is not the case because Jan is a massive favorite. And yeah, I mean, I, I really like this matchup for Jan. I think it's a bad matchup for Figgy. Not only is Figgy going to be 36 years old at this point, Jan's five years younger. Jan's going to have a height advantage here. I think the volume's not even close. Figgy's always been a low-volume guy relying on a lot of power. I don't think he has the power to knock out or hurt Piotr Jan. I don't think Figgy has the wrestling like a Marab to go out there and, and take down Jan. Um, and even like Marab was like 10 for 50-something on takedown. So I don't think Figgy's going to be able to wrestle here. I don't think he has the control grappling of an Aljamain Sterling, so I don't think he's going to be able to do that. See, so yeah, I think this fight primarily does play out on the feet. Jan's uh, younger, bigger, better cardio, better volume. He's durable. Um, I think it's a Jan win here and a Jan win probably by decision. Maybe a late finish, but I'll say decision win for Piotr Jan. So, yeah, that's what I'm going with for the main event. And there you guys have it. UFC Macau. Weird, weird card. Weird card. Going to be keeping it light, certainly. Um, I think it'd be a mistake to, to have too much action on this card. Um, fights kicking off at 3 o'clock in the morning my time. I'm going to wake up and the fight's going to be over, which which I hate I hate that, but it is what it is. So we got this card, and we have really uh, two really good cards to end the year. We got UFC 310 coming up in December, and then we also have UFC Tampa Bay as well. So lots to look forward to as a fight fan. Uh, if you guys could do me a favor, like on your way out, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. Check out DFSbythenumbers.com. That's where you'll find all my other content. And, yeah, going live Friday for some final thoughts. Don't think I'll do best bet this week um, since the fights are starting like 3 o'clock. So we'll, we'll, we'll save that for the, the 310 and the Tampa cards. So, yeah, guys, best of luck. UFC Macau. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.